Welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. If you're new to this show, then welcome aboard. I'm your host, Jack, and this is a video tutorial on using Photoshop Elements 9. Now, there's also, or this will also work in versions 8, 7, 6, and 5. I'm not sure if anything lower than that. Um, I've done tutorials in those, but you know, I don't remember all the menus from those older versions. So what we're going to do today is basically create a Happy New Year's type card or Happy New Year. Um, this is nice to take your family picture uh, that you took during Christmas and take that picture and kind of transform it into like a card style of a picture. Maybe you can frame this, you can send this off to grandma and grandpa or friends and relatives, whoever you might want to share this uh, picture with. So first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to simply use our marquee tool here and the elliptical marquee tool right because there's also a rectangular marquee tool now if you by default it's set to rectangle right click on it and click on elliptical you can go to the top up around here somewhere and hold your left mouse button down and just simply draw a circle and you want to circle the people in the picture itself and then leave it go. Now, as you noticed, most times I tell you over and over again to create a duplicate layer first. But this time we want to wait and we can create our duplicate layer now. And I'm going to show you why that is. So let's go ahead and on the Mac it's a Command J. And on the PC you know it's a Control J to create a duplicate layer. Now what just happened? What happened was we have this new layer. But if we shut this off, using the little eye here we talked about many times, you can see now on this outside I created a transparent type of a layer around this thing. And you could do whatever you want to on this layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill that layer. I like to fill mine with white, but you can click on here and fill it with any color you want. So make sure you're on layer 1. Then we're going to just basically grab our paint bucket tool and click once. And there we have it. Now we're filled. That layer is filled with white. Like I said, you can use any color you want. Now let's flip this back because the next part of this tutorial is we're going to start adding our text. We want to get text into here um, to give it a message. You could even make these uh, as a Christmas card for next year. You know, get your picture nice and ready to go. And uh, granted, we weren't all, you know, dressed in our Sunday bests or whatever for this picture. It was just a come-as-you-are type thing. The kids, you know, opened their gifts. They're all happy with what Santa brought them. They look good. We decided we're going to take a picture. Let's go ahead now and click on text. Again, if you right-click, ordinarily by default, it's on horizontal text. So the text goes from left to right. What I wanted to do was give it some different kind of depth. So I'm going to use vertical text. Now down here, you see where I switched these. If you leave this white, that's going to leave that text white and you're not going to see it on your white background. Make sure you flip this over using this little flip tool or grab whichever color you'd like to use. Up here, you can select whatever font you want. I chose this Microsoft Sans. That's the font that I want to use. I'm going to draw my box down. And the first thing I want to type in here is happy. course you know I'm going to back it up there because uh, I'm going to turn my cap locks key on and put in happy click my check mark so I have my happy on its own layer and I do this for a reason folks I do this so I can click on the move tool and I can move that wherever I want to put that now once we get that where we want let's go ahead and click on another text box down here and we'll type in new. Again, you can hit your enter key or you can click the checkbox up here and lock that in. Again, let's select the move tool and we're going to move this right to about there. Move this one over here just a little bit because we want to have enough space here for year. Happy New Year. So let's go ahead and draw that text box out right here. And we will simply type in their year and hit the checkbox again. 
Hit the Move tool, and we're going to move that over just a little bit. And there we go. Happy New Year. Now it looks really, really nice. You can put the year in there, you know, uh, for the next year would be 2011. Uh, or you can have this year in there for 2010. Whichever you really prefer to do is simply up to you. The next thing we're going to do is we want to add some life to that text. I hate flat text on a picture. It looks like I just simply typed it, right? Obviously. So, we're going to move this over just a little bit. And we'll move this up just a little bit like this. All right. Now, what we're going to do at this point is we are going to select these. These layers here, that's the three layers, Happy New Year. You can see they marked themselves already with what's in the text boxes. We're going to hold down the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Windows and simply select those all. Then we'll go up to Layer and we're going to merge those layers down to one layer. Now the reason I do this is because now as I'm adding some depth to that text, I don't have to do it individually for each layer. I could just do it all in one layer. The only reason we made individual layers, remember, was so that we can move that text around. Now let's go up here to bevels. We're going to add a bevel to this. Let's see what this looks like. And you can see now how there's a little bevel on those. Just very little. You say, well, Jack, that's nice, but that's not really an effect that I like. It, it's not really coming out at me, right? So let's undo that one. And let's select this, this uh, particular bevel here, and we'll click Apply. Now there you go. It's a little bit more up. It looks like it's almost three-dimensional, right? Or 2D anyway. It's coming off the page. What we want to do now is right over here, if you can see this, I'm going to try to bring this up here to you. If you can see this, there's a little uh, FX on here, right? We're going to shrink this back down here. And if we click on that, double-click it, it brings up our styles box. Let's bring this up here a little bit so we can see what's going on here. Now in the styles box what we want to do with this is we're going to add some inner glow to it. We can also take that bevel size and you can run that bevel size up a little bit. Look how it's coming more off the page, right? It gives it more depth. That's what we're looking for is depth. You have inner glow which is this inside and we have outer glow which is the outside or the shaded area. So if you click on glow and give it an outer glow and we will give it more of a color here. Let's give it more of a blue so we can see what's happening. You can take this size and you can actually bring this up and you're actually putting on an outside glow. What I tend to like even more though is I like the inner glow. So if we go with the inner glow here again let's give it some blue color and we will give it some size here. You can see here we can actually change that text color with the glow, right? Just like so. You can exchange the color just by moving this around. You can change the opacity. You can drop it out or bring it up. You can actually change the angle of which way you want that to go. Now, if you don't want the glow, that's fine. You can also add a drop shadow, which you can see here with a little indication of the black on the sides. You can give it more or less. Distance, you can pull it out. Give it a little bit more of a shadow, right? Make it really feel like it's popping off the page. Then we'll give us some stroke color here. There's a lot you can do to give your text a lot of depth. And I know we've looked at this in the past. Stroke colors around the outsides of it here. There's a little color on that. It's a little too much here. You almost just want it to be almost like it's somewhat outlined. And there you go. Let's go ahead and come back here. And now we actually have something that's very presentable that looks very nice that's going to work out for us. So there you have it. It's very easy to create this. It's it's a very uh, you know very easy task, and I think you'll be uh, very pleased. Now, if you've enjoyed this video tutorial, please take a few minutes and stop by my website. 
It's newly designed. Uh, it looks a lot nicer. It's more presentable. And here you will see all of the great DVD collections. I just want to throw this out there. Uh, a lot of people say, Jack, why advertise at the beginning? Uh, we're going to advertise at the end. So that's what we're doing now is I'm going to advertise to you at the end. Um, very much if you click this pull-down menu, um, we're going to go back here. If you click this pull-down menu right here, it will give you all the different versions that I have up for sale. They're very inexpensive and naturally the best value for your buck is the three volume set. You can also donate to the show, which helps to support my website and helps to produce these videos with the latest, greatest software to get them out there to you. So folks, thank you very much. Uh, the website, if you're looking for it, is jackstechcorner.com. So, uh, Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to the shows, please subscribe. Uh, get them subscriptions running up there. I'm trying to hit that 5,000 mark. Right now, you know, we're teetering around 4,600 or so. So if you're watching this video, click the subscribe button. I promise you I'm not going to bombard you with any messages or anything. Some people do on YouTube. Uh, but if I post new videos, you're going to get them very, very soon. Thanks again for watching. Again, keep those shutters clicking. Keep the editors editing. And I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.